Today we are going to be making this card. I would say it is simple, but it may not be simple to you, but you can make it simple. I used alcohol markers for the three colored background. If you don't have alcohol markers, you could probably use your colored pencils, watercolor pencils, ink pads swiping across. I've seen that done before. And if you don't have this stamp set that I have, get your stamp sets out that you do have. And let's make this card together and have fun. I am using this stamp set close to my heart called Piece of Cake. I'm not sure if it's still available or not. This is Memento Tuxedo Black ink and Spectrum Noir alcohol markers in the three colors that are shown there. I will be using my Misty stamping tool. Foam squares, four millimeter thick. And I'm using white cardstock for the base. I'm using a 110 pound, 100 pound, and the front base was 80 pound cardstock. Here I am just taking my alcohol markers. And I'm going to use the blunt end of the marker and just swipe back and forth, making the ends uneven. This is the green. And go down, you know, about as far as you think. And then next, I will be using the blue. And I don't go down all the way because I want to leave a little white room there for the sentiment. Now I am getting the Misty Stamping Tool out. I'm attaching the cardstock. I am using the magnets to hold the cardstock down. Now I am placing the stamps on the cardstock to position it to be able to pick up to put the lid down on it and pick the stamps up. That's one thing nice about a stamping tool. I'm doing all three of these images all at one time. You have a little bit of, um, well, how do I want to say this? When you're using a block, to put your stamped images on. You don't have much of, you know, you can't go back. Once you use your block and you stamp your image down, it's very hard to, you know, to pick your um, block back up and try to get it back down on there perfect. So with a stamping tool like this, you know, you can ink it up and if you don't have enough ink down, open the lid back up or Put more ink on your stamped image and then you know push down on the lid there and you'll have it exactly how you want it there I was moving the magnet down just a little bit because I didn't want it to hit that sentiment now I'm just inking up the stamped images And you'll see that I don't get enough ink up on that top cake. I didn't press hard enough. So I'm going to open it up and you'll see that's an eraser. Sometimes it just gives a little more pressure if you push down on that lid. And you can see it didn't get 
the um, that top cake on the bottom there all the way so I'm putting a little bit more ink down just in that one area and then when I close the lid I'm just going to push down just on that area right there And I'm just going to take a microfiber rag and just wipe that ink off for now. Just doing a quick job. And taking the cardstock off. And we're going to get ready and we'll put the foam squares on the back of that. These foam squares measure approximately one and a half inches by one and a half they are thick, very strong adhesive on these. Actually, you don't even have to use foam squares if you don't want. You can just use, you know, you can glue it right down on your card base if you want, or use um, um, glue. Um, some people use the craft foam. I have used that before. It is definitely cheaper than the foam squares. I just prefer the foam squares, um, maybe not this thick, but actually on the foam squares like this that are that thick, that, that, they work really well when you're, you know, just doing a sentiment and you really want it to stand out a little bit more on your card. But this is just simple stamping on the front of the card. There's no, nothing extra on there. I'm just going to take the back of the backing off of the thumb squares. Now, when you get ready to line this up on the card base, you have to be really careful that the adhesive you know, that you have it lined up correctly, because once that adhe adhesive hits your card base, it's going to stick. And always make sure your card base is opening in the right direction. So, you, because you don't want your your uh, image there going on the wrong way, that has happened to me before. So here again, I'm just trying to be very careful and not letting that adhesive get touch that card base before I can get it on there as perfect as I can. I think that's one of the hardest things I have in the card making. Is getting that front base on there somewhat lined up and I was just taking a piece of um, plain cardstock putting it on top of that and just making sure that um, the top base was on there correctly I am using Ranger liquid pearls this is called blush and I like to take a piece of scrap paper and just get a little bit out first to make sure it's not going to come out in a big glob. And I just take a little bit and then just go in a circular motion to make it look like a gem. You can use embellishments of any type. This green one is called Sage. And sometimes you'll, you will need to use a um, straight pin if it gets dried up like you know just like glue does you just have to poke the pin down in there the blue one is called robin's egg that one had a hard time coming out a little bit you can see it looked like it was dried up a little bit and then it i finally get it flowing correctly and then again just a small little dab in a circular motion and those liquid pearls I usually let them dry overnight before I go any farther before I you know put anything on the inside of the card and I made another card similar to this different design of course but using the same technique I used the three colors swiped across that is a Simon Says stamp and I just took a piece of yarn and put it between the card base and the first layer and it had that little tail hanging there and that's it. Those are the two cards using that very simple technique. 
no pattern cardstock needed just the swipe across remember the the liquid pearls are wet so let them dry and that's it thank you so much for watching